I was recently invited to film volunteers as they harvested water hyacinth near the Crystal River Post Office. The plan is to corral the plant in an experiment to see if it helps clean Kings Bay. This is water hyacinth? Yeah, the purple flowered one right here is water hyacinth. And uh, the, uh, this is water lettuce. And if you pick one up, um, or if you see it underwater, these beautiful little roots um, are floating and they are a little microcosm, I guess this word, little world of fish and a little shrimp and a lot of little creatures. They're, uh, they filter the water is the main thing and uh, see how pretty they are? And um, they're like little feathers. And uh, they're great for filtering out things that are bad in the water. The water hyacinth have this beautiful flower and uh, they have the same feathery roots. Beautiful. And uh, they're home for a bunch of little minnows and fish and frogs. So they help the fish establish themselves. Just a real wonderful plant. Helen Spivey, longtime resident, spearheaded the project. I lived here back in the early 70s and the hyacinths, uh, we had a lot of hyacinths, but they made the fishing real good. And they also kept um, kind of kept the water rate clean, only I didn't realize that until the county came along and with herbicides and herbicided them and harvesters and took them away. And it was kind of, I understand hyacinths are exotic. And you can't put them in a lake and do what we're doing now because the lake, if it's eutrophic, if it's got a lot of uh, pollution in it, They'll eat it up, clean it up, we'll have clear water, but then you've got to get the plants out or they'll die and put it all back. Here we've got Mother Nature's harvester, a manatee, to take them up or uh, they sail out to the Gulf and die out there. They can't live in salt water. So I just thought it was the easiest way to, to use Mother Nature to get back to where the bay was. This experiment with water hyacinth is in its infancy and is a plan to reintroduce corralled water hyacinth into Kings Bay. This pilot project is headed up by biologist Bob Knight of the Howard T. Odom Florida Springs Institute. We caught up with Dr. Knight in Kings Bay as volunteers help to corral the experimental water hyacinth. So, uh, Bob, what's going on here today? Well, we've been uh, running an experiment for the last year and a half trying to demonstrate the use of aquatic plants to clean up the water in Kings Bay. We're using floating aquatic plants, water hyacinths, to shade the water, to uh, kill off the plankton algae that's making the water green and taking away the water clarity. It's ironic that that weed harvester is now putting weeds back. Yeah, it's very <laughs> tell right. these are good weeds, right? Well, actually, all weeds are good if they're in the right place. The only plant that's a weed is one that's in the wrong place. And all, all plants have functions. These plants have the function of utilizing light and shading the water below them. And what we want to do is harness that to shade the water enough to kill off the algae, the microscopic algae that's taking away the clarity in the bay. Uh, it's called phytoplankton. It's, uh, it grows out there because there's nutrients and there's a lot of light and there's not as much water coming into the bay. And what we're doing is treating the symptom of, um, of that and by uh, reducing that plankton will increase the water clarity of the bay. And we, these plants also are known for taking up nutrients, so they're good at removing nutrients from water. And so we're calling this a phytoremediation, phyto being plant remediation, a water quality uh, restoration project. And uh, the plants can do both things. They can shade the algae out and they can pull the nutrients out of the water. And the idea is that if you took a small part of the whole bay and covered it with these plants and kept the plants there so they weren't a nuisance for people, because they were a nuisance in the past when they were everywhere in the bay, people could not boat. But if we keep them corralled, and this is what we call a corral here, uh, if we keep them corralled, perhaps we can increase the clarity in the bay uh, while we harness the use of these plants. Yeah, the water hyacinths are actually a wonderful plant community. You know, we, we think of them as exotic plants because they were imported to Florida over a hundred years ago, but they've really become part of the natural flora of Florida. We'll never get rid of them. 
Uh, we, we've learned to control them. We have exotic pests, or we have brought in pests that are, are turning those leaves brown over there. But the hyacinths produce a beautiful environment for wildlife like this. This is a crayfish. This is food for the bigger fish. You know, the bass and the redfish love these things. And, uh, and the hyacinth plant community supports these better than just this algae plant community that's in the bay right now. That's one reason we want to replace the lingvia algae with healthy plants again. This might be a good spot to fish, huh? Someday. <laughs> <laughs> And this is, this is just dealing with the symptoms. We still have the problems in the bay of reduced water flow. And that means there's less flushing in the bay and the bay doesn't stay as clear. And we also have elevated nutrients, which the state is just issuing now a total maximum daily load for the bay. They're, they're having a meeting on Friday to, uh, a working group meeting to release that total maximum daily load for the bay for nitrogen, which is the state's plan to clean up the bay. And hopefully biologists, they'll listen to biologists versus politicians. They, they do. They're biologists and their engineers work on those plans. They do the best job they can, but there's always political science mixed with the real science. So right. There's always political decisions made. But, uh, the, you know, the problems are so great. It's a 300 square mile uh, watershed. So that's almost 200,000 200, acres of land that feed the water to this bay. And uh, there are a lot of people. There's, you know, tens of thousands, almost hundreds of thousands of people making decisions on that land about how they use fertilizer, how they use water, and those, those decisions that are affecting the bay. So if we want to protect Kings Bay, we need a lot of people to come on board, either through their own knowledge that they can do something better by using less water and less fertilizer or by regulations to get them to do the right thing. Do you have a website? Um, yeah, it's the, it's the floridaspringsinstitute.org. And there's a lot of information on there. We're working on springs restoration efforts all over the state of Florida. Working at Silver Springs, and Wakulla Springs, and Itchituckney, and Santa Fe River Springs. Just uh, springs everywhere, Wakaiva. So, and Kings Bay, that was one of my favorites because I came here in the 70s when I did my doctoral research. This is one of the places I was studying was the Crystal River. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm glad to be back here, glad to help. But I'm, you know, I'm shocked by seeing the difference in water clarity between now and the 1970s when I first came here. And uh, I'm, I would love to help to do something about it. Right now, this- Well, you are. <laughs> well, I'm trying, but this project's totally unfunded. It's, it's, it's totally volunteer help that's doing this work. The Springs Institute has very limited resources. It's, it's, we're not uh, supported by the, the government at all because we have to take sort of contrary opinions to the government sometimes when the, the job's not getting done. Uh, but we would love for them to, to accept the results of this project and maybe learn from it and do a better job of managing Kings Bay. And maybe get some funding. Well, funding for us or just funding for doing the right things here. And, sure. and I know they're supporting arts projects, so that's at least that's helpful to raise awareness. That's the one rake at a time. One rake at a time project, yes. Well, Bob, uh, we appreciate all your work and uh, carry on and we'll look forward to some uh, results. We'll see. Yeah, we, we're planning to go about another year and a half on this on this experiment and uh, we'll see. By then we'll know whether or not this idea works. Great. Thank, Thank you. you.